hello and welcome to the breaking bitcoin market update it's of course wednesday june 30th 2021 that's right guys we are cresting over u2 right now the second quarter of the year is coming to a close we're about halfway into the year another monthly candle closes upon us and uh yeah look where we are kind of uh I put out from where we were just a couple months ago, but Q3, Q4, the other latter half of the year, going to present uh, even more excitement than we were witnessed to in uh, the earlier part of the year. It's going to be very, very interesting next few months to come. It goes to show you something happened in uh, on very large timescales, if you, of course, call um month blocks a large time scale but of course we're going to be discussing all this and more including a bitcoin secretly uh the rally giving up the ghost are we uh bullish euphoria suddenly out of the box are we about to uh, bloom off the rose yeah we are about to find out what comes next and uh we're still going to discuss all of this and more in today's update guys very excited to get into it today of course is wednesday you know what Wednesdays mean here at crackingcryptocurrency.com. It's the community mentorship day. That's where right around three o'clock Eastern, we got to get into the more private, more intimate one-on-one setting. Well, group setting with many of our aspiring traders and community members. Uh, that doesn't start till three, but that does mean we got to wrap the show a little early today, guys. We're going to go an hour and a half, so therefore we're going to try to keep uh the show kind of on schedule today i do want to leave plenty of time for people's requests so i'll try to keep the intro brief today everyone all right everything out of the way let's move our analyst here at cc got alex with us this afternoon alex how you doing hey i'm doing well thank you sorry we just had some spammers join the group so i gotta oh house cleaning gotcha all right and we got jason Jason, how you doing? What's going on, guys? All I'm right. doing well. Um, got some uh, a lot of signals yesterday that uh, a lot looked very similar. So only took a few of them. Just and the reason for that was because if it decided to turn around intraday, I didn't want to be uh, have all my uh, eggs in one long basket. So we'll see. Um, could be throwback. Could get a sell off here. I'll be interested to see the monthly close. But uh, excited to see what we have in store. Yep, very exciting to see what comes next. Guys, the, the FUD and uh, just the developments seemingly occurring in the space every day. It leads one to think that uh, there could be plenty more volatility to come, maybe even to the upside. We're going to explore all this in just a bit. All right, in the meantime, get the show started. Uh, everything I think is running good today, so we can get right into it. Take a quick look at uh at bitcoin today on the charts at this indicator is already applied to my chart bitcoin's still hanging out here above the baseline going to be pulling back we'll uh will we get a bit of a bounce off the baseline this uh temporary intraday action uh minks of course popped up above the zero line and even um uh, wada wada seems to be at least flipping uh, bullish into the green and uh, if we get maybe a little bit more out of it here today will we indeed be postured nice and bullish I certainly hope so uh, let's have a look let's quickly get it to Ethereum here uh, Ethereum kind of in a similar spot currently at 21 12 on Ethereum makes still above zero very curious what comes next XRP Currently at 66 cents. Man, most of these markets seem to be following a Bitcoin's trajectory right now. All right. Yeah. Here's a look at DOT back down at $15. Getting sold into seemingly like everything else intraday. Uh, quick look at Kusama, $193 Kusama after hitting a high of $238 yesterday. Kusama had a nice little two day run there. 30% gains uh, two days in, uh, well, well, two over the last. Uh, 72 hours we saw it rise as much as 30 percent and we've given now back about 20 percent from yesterday's highs on usama yeah, so really basically right we're ranging 
certainly yeah. are, but uh, impressive yeah. amount of volatility on that Kusama. Um, here's a look at Doge. Ooh, sharp, sharp deflection on Doge. Here it comes crashing down. Is it going to bounce right here? 24 cents off the baseline? Or can we anticipate this doggy to give up the ghost any minute now? Um, yeah, well, a lot of pretty damn flat on this one though, so we'll keep an eye on this. Take a look at Sheeb. Man, Sheeb uh, did all right, but here it is currently pulling back. Man, I can't even generate a baseline off of this uh, Binance. Told you. Told you yeah. it wasn't the time yet. Yeah. <laughs> certainly wasn't. Maybe you're right. Well, uh, maybe maybe the retest is the time. Maybe. Yeah, we could be dealing with the retest now, right? We can look at it, I guess. Uh, we could be. We're still ostensibly uh, above this uh, baseline, but how much for how much longer is the question, or my trend line here, I should say. Uh, let's take a quick look at gold. We'll are get we, rich. Are, wait, are we? We're not actually. Are we? Uh, um, okay. I this thing hasn't drawn my baseline. I think it's too new of a chart on Binance. With that oh, said, okay. uh, you see this trend line we were toying with oh, the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah who still, knows? Yeah, I see what you're still on this side of the trend line. Curious what comes next. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, what else do we have before we get into the next one? Here's a quick look at gold, still above $1,770. All right, situation short, sort of getting printed on today's mix on gold. Mm, wait till you take a look at the Dixie though. Check this out. Check this out. Another breakout in the Dixie. Delay. Yeah, I know you guys are actually not watching directly, but look at this once you finally do see my screen. Continuation long on the Dixie, currently at 92.4. Dollar up, Bitcoin down. Yet another day of another great example of that inverse correlation that we talk about all the time. That's why we look at the Dixie. I mean, every every damn time the dollar has a big update, what's going on in crypto? We're down. Yeah, and um, gold... Gold certainly reacting about what you expect. Most time reverse correlations. Gold certainly doing it. But uh, damn, Dixie uh, making another run for it. Going on with these markets, guys. All right, there is a quick overview of uh, the latest price action and some of the major pairs I like to watch here. So let's get into the next uh, segment right now. And right, let's see what's going on in the bubble space. About what you expect. Sea of red, guys. Um, most tokens down, uh, single to double digits. You're a sea of red guys. I, uh, you got the likes of, well, here we go, ICP. Anybody, uh, anybody FOMO into ICP? Because here it is, getting smacked down in the face. One of the biggest losers okay. of the day. I bring you ICP down nearly 20%. Um, let's see. Jason. Yes, sir. Nothing. Getting a little echo off your mic, but it's all good. Um, Someone mentioned about ICP yesterday in chat. Uh, I, I, I can't remember who said it, but, but they said this spot may or may not be the bottom on ICP, but whenever ICP bounces, it's going to melt faces. They're probably right. This thing is so volatile. Yeah, I look forward to checking out the chart again today because... Uh, cool. Well, leading the losers, but among them, there is a couple uh, green tokens, and it's Waves. Waves seemingly up 8% on a day like this, and Uma... Numerair was also up today. I'm surprised it's not on Crypto Bubbles. Numerair was up like 30% earlier. Oh, no way. Numenair, one of the gainers. One of the outlier gainers on a day like this, where uh, you have the likes of Theta down 10%, Rune 10%, Sushi down a little over 11%. And cake swap nearly 10%. Ave down 12%. Sheeb down 10%. Yes, it's a similar story. If you name a token, it's down about 10% today. Right. All we need to look at, I think, on the bubbles front today. What else? Have? All right, let me get right into the news. I've neglected to <clears throat> post another poll for today, guys. Uh, and so we could check in on a two day old poll, but at the moment, Man, what's there to say? Markets are ranging. I'm stuck in some kind of triangle on Bitcoin. I need to go. I need to draw a triangle on my chart. But are we stuck in some kind of triangle on Bitcoin? This is uh, sure this is testing a lot of people's patience. Alas, it is um, the middle of the summer. I wasn't expecting this. Is exactly how I, you know, when we were by the time we were talking about sell in May, 
Um, this is kind of how I projected the next few weeks and months to go. Uh, just run out, ground out uh, market price action. Why didn't, why didn't you let the rest of us know, Jack? God, if you you knew all along and you didn't tell us? Um, I mean, I'm sure we were all Jack. on the same page, were we not? Okay. All catching you by surprise now? Well, and I was I, merely following your lead. I see, oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I, no, I... You know, it's certainly. I, you know, I've been in the markets for about four years now, and I'm still, I'm still, I, I still consider myself a student. I'm, st I'm still learning, and uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to see it kind of play out. You know, it's one thing to be like, I think this thing is going to happen, and then you know, months later, you're like, oh, this thing's happening. Yeah, it's different in real time, right? Because you're never completely sure. And I don't care how long you do this. I don't think you're ever just going to be like, I know exactly what's going to happen. You always got to be a student. Although, I mean, it, it does it does help with your, you know, over time, you become more confident in your Absolutely. decisions. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, you know, I was right. And so, you know, when the time just comes around, you're like, well, I, I kind of know what to do. Uh, it's like you, you may not know when it's going to rain, but if you've been caught in a few rainstorms, you get a good idea of what to do and what not to do, right? And it's like it's it's like the, that same sort of thing. We may not the, the market is like the weather. It's like it's chaos theory. Like sure, if we could predict what everything was happening, we could predict what the market could do, but that's that's it's not possible. Like you don't know what all the participants are doing and thinking and what they're gonna do next. So, you know, you kind of meteorologists look at weather patterns we look at chart patterns you try and get a sense of what's going to happen in the future and you, you're like all right there's some percent hmm. chance we're right and then here's what you do if that happens well uh good analogy uh thank you jeff goldblum for uh, for that one uh, yes right. life uh finds a way yeah. yeah i just watched that the other day too so um excellent <laughs> All right, guys, let's get into the next piece here. Uh, let's cover a bit of news, and we'll get right into the TA. Again, the show goes a little short, so uh, I should probably segue into the main analysis as quickly as possible today, so I'll certainly try and do that, although we're still perfectly on time right now. Um, one other thing, yes, the chest. We'll open the D-Live chest a uh, quarter after uh, two, so exactly... Uh, 55 minutes from now yep 55 minutes from now guys uh stand by we will get that chest coming your way in the meantime get right into the uh all right start with this first piece here from coin telegraph coincidence it asks bitcoin see its highs and lows on turnaround tuesdays in june interesting pattern emerges in june as bitcoin stays stuck in its defined trading range between well, 30 and 40k and uh Yes, Bitcoin printing a new price indicator this month. It may not involve anything more than the day of the week. All right, so this is a little lighthearted, guys. This is not anything to maybe uh, build a system around per se, but still, the people over at Cointelegraph, at least this writer, has observed an interesting little uh, phenomenon in June. Apparently, Tuesdays are now being dubbed Turnaround Tuesdays. And according to analysts, Bitcoin, despite trading a predictable range for uh, a few deviations, with few deviations, has still displayed patterns of behavior in recent weeks. In recent weeks, I should say. And what focus in, is what Bitcoin it's does. A non-story. Yeah, well, let's just see here no, what they have. Well, let's give them a shot. Just had to some. Um, the past four weeks has seen the pair deliver either highs or lows within its range each Tuesday. With this week being no exception, the pattern this month thus far has been for Tuesdays to mark the range swing highs and lows, one analyst confirmed. <laughs> All right, since then, a brief dip below 30K occurred. Technical alerts saw 30K, so blah, 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 blah. All right, here's the chart. Let's take a quick look. It's funny how these things work out. Is there something special? Is that the range high? That's not the same range high that he has marked out in the other spot. This guy is such an ass. No, let's can't. Can we not show this bullshit TA on our show? All right, all right. listen. If I just your choice, Jack. 
All right, all right. We're getting vetoed super hard on the show here, guys. Uh, if Tuesday to start working. If I had a, a, a little bit more time, maybe we could verify this uh, this gentleman's claims here. But uh, I don't know. I mean, look, is this a Tuesday? This sure marked the low. Was this another Tuesday? Interesting. What's going on in Bitcoin land on the Tuesday? Are the whales uh, are whales um, checking out of the office on Tuesday now? Uh, I'm not sure what to make of it, but. Guys, There's turn nothing around. to make of it. Might be, just, you're right. There might be nothing to make happened, of it. It happened three out of four times so far because you don't know if that's even going to happen. That's not anything. All right. Well, we'll see how this week continues to play out. But guys, in the back of my mind, I've officially logged Turnaround Tuesdays as uh, something to keep a uh, lookout in the month of July. We'll see if this continues. All right. Like I said, guys, this one, uh, let's not take it to heart too much. All right, uh, all major Bitcoin mining farms just shut down in China's Yunnan province. China apparently not messing around, says uh, Kevin Zhang, vice president of a mining firm Foundry. Claims that all major mining operations being shut down in China's Yunnan province, most southwestern province, according to anonymous source. So this is for real now. This is for real. The Chinese, you know, we've been following this for a while. And just another story indicating as such that uh, China's pretty damn serious. Uh, of course, uh, let's see, China ramping up its crackdown on the cusp of the Communist Party's 100th anniversary celebrations on July 1st. All right, so China apparently, of course, uh, throwing down. They're getting serious. They're rolling out the uh, the launch of their Yuan, so to speak, right now. And uh, wow, they really got their act together on the mining front all right so all the detractors who are crying about centralization in china time this party has alleviated these concerns uh in that regard take a look here i have another piece here uh mining firm terra wolf ordered a hundred million dollars in new mining equipment so the mining industry is not quite dead or moving around the world in many ways this is good very well a good thing U.S.-based Bitcoin mining firm TerraWolf recently announced its plans to go public via a reverse merger, and it's ordered 30,000 new mining machines from Bitmain. Announced on Tuesday, saying that uh, they ordered near 100 million of Antminer's S19 Pros, and uh, of course, one miner is about grand. Uh, cool. Well, this is this, so. There's going to be a new mining stock. Yeah, Terra Wolf indeed. So it's going public by a reverse merger. So what's what's the what's the new ticker going to be? New ticker, yeah. Uh, reverse merger with Nasdaq listed imaging technology company Iconics Corporation to go public in the U.S. At the time, the firm yeah. said it would order blah blah blah. Okay, it doesn't exactly, but maybe it's going to be Iconics. Unclear yet, um, but nonetheless. Uh, Mining, uh, mining, seemingly coming to the U.S. This, uh, like I keep saying, it's a good thing. Um, again, a lot of these detractors, uh, while China gears up and really wants to, you want to, uh, well, the, you want, uh, the digital renminbi, whatever you want to call it, um, the CBDC uh, being deployed over there. We are getting a stab at mining, getting, uh, getting kind of the whole industry move closer to the West. Uh, might give us the uh, some necessary time to kind of um, get everybody's feet wet in the industry uh, before who knows, but we follow the same trajectory as China. Will we see Western governments begin to launch their CB in the near future? Could be a good way to get a foot in the door, but getting a little acquainted with the industry. I know CBDC likely ain't going to work. Pre ain't going to use proof of work mining or traditional blockchain like we're used to with Bitcoin. But nonetheless, you know, it still seems like uh, on a macro level, on a meta level, things are kind of shifting the the, the global balance. Probably have like it'll be like Rothschild's bank mining, and only like central banks can mine the chain. Yeah, that'd be scary. <laughs> that'd be rich. That, that would be scary. But uh, you know, we're heading. We don't trust other people with the hardware. That's all. It's nothing. It's nothing like special. It's just we just don't trust other people with the hardware. That's it. Scary. Gary, that's where it's going. Uh, yeah, at the very least, hope uh, hopefully. Uh, Don't we, worry, the chains are still totally permissionless. You just you, your your hardware is just not strong enough. That's uh, it. 
No, dangerous indeed, because we've already seen hints of uh, of how exactly they can mandate miners to collect certain transactions, right? Whitelist, blacklist transactions. It's a scary world, guys. Let's hope we at least can get rich in it. Yes. Or just how quickly a, a country can stop all mining within its borders. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Finra orders Robinhood to pay over $70 million dollars significant harm to its customers all right robin hood gains slapped with a 70 million dollar fine over outages and misleading communications related to its trading platform it's the largest fine finra has ever issued uh that's right uh the online brokerage platform robin hood's gonna pay about 70 million dollars in fines of course be cited it's like uh, yeah not a lot a not a lot but seemingly one of the largest uh fines levied by financial industry regulatory authority uh, ever in its history. It's the largest penalty, yep, uh, largest one ever. Action sends a clear message, says Finra. Yeah, um, you can kind of get away with murder. Yeah. Price is 70 million, real clear, clear message. message. Continue with what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right, uh, I hope this is some console, uh, condolence or con 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 um, yeah, is it cool? as you were. Yes, indeed. Uh, any Robin Hood traders out here? Uh, I doubt you're going to get uh, any kind of uh, reprieve from Robin Hood themselves, but uh, maybe they'll be on their better behavior. Good luck. Uh, maybe less outages in the future. I doubt it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Binance tackling the travel rule compliance after multiple bans. Following bans in Japan, UK, Ontario, Binance is apparently ramping up its compliance effort with specialized tool developed by CypherTrace. Uh, Damn, course. I think it's going to be harder to do the whole just open up an account on Binance with the VPN thing coming soon. Yes. Yeah, I wonder correct. how much longer we'll be able to keep trading on Binance as a group. Yep, this times, makes me wonder. times are changing. The travel yeah. rule, of course, introduced by the Financial Action Task Force requires regulators and virtual asset providers, including crypto exchanges, custody providers, OTC desks, to gather and share customer data during transactions. The rule came into effect back in 2020. And uh, broadly reflects uh, much of the requirements already in place in traditional money transmission in the U.S. And uh, which requires, of course, things like identifying information of all parties engaged in transfers, etc., etc. However, adherence to the rule has been complicated for many crypto exchanges worldwide due to discrepancies between various countries, particular transpositions of the FATF framework. For this reason, Binance, following the steps of other VASPs, is choosing to implement a specialized tool developed by crypto intelligence cypher cypher trace that has been adapted to tackle some of the challenges that vasp are faced with dubbed traveler this tool is named after the rule it's been designed to address the tool continues cypher traces long-term work on open source travel rule information architecture and it's designed to handle the country's vasp uh due diligence demanded by the fatf all right, so basically they're coming out with a new tool and, you know, this might require, you know, ramping up some KYC requirements over at Binance. That will be the day. Binance is still a golden place to go to get a KYC free I account. I have a question. So if people are using CypherTrace on us, does that make us futuristic cyberpunks? Probably. People are like people. We're out here. We're making money off of like magic, internet, digital stuff, and like the government's trying to hunt us down and stop us. Binance yeah, trying to keep awesome. us from making money. Guys, we're cyberpunks. We're futuristic cyberpunks. Uh, cipher punks. Internet anarchists. Yes, yeah, sure. Why not? Yes. Uh, well, um, I anticipate Tom Cruise to come rappelling through the ceiling any minute now. I'm going to be, at this point, uh, Cypher Trace 2.0 is going to be uh, predicting future um, uh, financial crimes. So get ready, get On profiled. July 3rd, 2021, Cypher Trace became self aware. Yes. All right. <laughs> there you go, guys. Yeah, the times are a changing indeed. Even Binance's whole role in this industry is, uh, is up up in the air um hopefully they can make a, a very clean transition into a more regulatory compliant uh, state something more um credible like um coinbase or more i'm not sure what the word i'm looking for here is but um 
yeah, Binance still kind of operating seemingly in this international gray zone. Uh, maybe this little uh, adapting this the traveler rule or this travel app um, from CypherTrace might help in compliance. It seems like we're waiting for a huge regulatory shakeup that might strike deep into the heart of the space. Whether that'll be uh, something to do with Tether or something to do with Binance uh, still remains to be seen. But yeah, certainly Binance Binance might have uh, might have its day uh, to pay, I guess. Uh, Twitter into this next one, guys, and we're gonna wrap the news up right soon. Uh, Twitter's giving out 140 Ethereum-based NFTs that can be seen on Rarible. All right, Twitter is releasing a set of NFTs. 20 available in each design of seven designs it's put uh them on the nft marketplace on rarible but it's handing them out directly so twitter's giving out 140 nfts today and they're available on rarible blah blah blah, blah. Uh, one nft called furry twitter shows a furry three-dimensional version of twitter's logo another one's called reply guy representing someone who always comes up to, oh, with the same reply all right copy pasta user so crazy um i said a while ago this was gonna be a thing damn it um this is kind of it's it's neat anybody uh here's a vitamin t one vitamin t is vitamin twitter uh i don't know this is uh, it's kind of neat i'm not a collector i don't really care about stuff like this but i still think it's kind of neat and twitter is a is a big company and uh you know this just kind of further raises uh the profile of this tech uh so anybody uh Hi. Been warned, it okay? sounds more like something that came out of their marketing department than something that is, is something that you know pushes forward the tech right yeah i mean i'm not gonna stick my neck out for a free nft but if uh, anybody's interested uh let me know if you manage to snag one of these 140 nfts let me know what's involved in getting uh, one of these given away to you i'd hate to overpay for this all right uh finally we got a Democrat here from the U.S., uh, Brad Sherman, claiming that he would rather let people buy lottery tickets than cryptocurrencies. He wants to shut them down. Heard it here. Representative Brad Sherman, Democrat, California, called crypto highly volatile. Quote, if one person makes a million and retires at 49, uh, nine people lose 100,000. Coinbase makes money. The millionaire Aww. goes on TV and tells how wonderful it is. And nine others do not retire in dignity, but instead become eligible for Medicaid. I want to shut it down. Oof. What, what about the, the rich class that uses the markets and the hedge funds that uses middle class liquidity to make sure that they stay on top of the middle class? Like, what? Well, so one guy gets makes a million and then 10 other people like that is so stupid hey, well, yeah i what what jason's saying is that the entire system is a ponzi yes. scheme it's not the like the system system is yeah that. it's like That's what so you described is the system we already have yeah and they're like we got to make a change because common people are starting to get good at it like that's fucking ignorant uh, you gotta make sure you know on the bottom Indeed, guys, I certainly uh, empathize with your remarks on this one. And uh, yeah, well, I do <laughs> yep. Uh, one other further quote here: Cryptocurrencies have the political support of patriotic anarchists who are rooting for tax evasion. I hope we shut it down, man. Total negative spin on the whole thing. A bit of a misrepresentation, but guys, kind of goes to show you much of the sentiment in the uh, the boomer crowd, the existing boomer crowd that kind of reigns over us. I, for one, look forward to my uh, anarcho uh, cyberpunk future, where indeed we step over each other. But alas, you get yours, I get mine. Everything balances out in the end. Uh, Bank of England economists, CBDCs are going to fundamentally disrupt uh, traditional centuries-old banking. Yes, so as much as uh, Senator Sherman here pushes back on the coming uh, digital revolution in the fintech space, here's one chief economist who uh, well sees that. I know CBDCs might not quite be crypto as we traditionally consider it, but again, this is the whole digitization of all this entire space and uh things things are changing as much as the, they want to push back on it things could soon change uh one last quick item here i'm just going to read the headline usd stablecoin could expand to 10 more blockchains all right usdc 
coming up due in the tether. Uh, let's see here with a market cap of over 25 billion on four networks. Uh, USDC, USD Circle, the stable coin, the US based stable coin. Uh, as apparently has its sights set on expanding to several other blockchains. Uh, let's see here. Become available Avalanche, Cello, Flow, Hedera, Kava, Nervous, Polkadot, Stax, Tezos, and Tron, said USDC creator. All right, just more blockchains on which to get your USDC. Man, crazy, you know? Exodus of miners out of China. Tether seemingly uh, having finally a major uh, competitor coming up in the room. Uh, times are a changing. All right. That's about all I have time to cover for today. Let's get quickly into the live chat and uh, shout out a few users before we get into the main TA event that you're all here for. All right, let me expand down the chat window and get a look at kicking it with us this Wednesday afternoon. Ron Legato, shout outs to Ron. As far as I can tell, you were here first in the YouTube chat, YouTube chat this afternoon. Shout outs to Ron. Uh, Mr. Ether. Back in the chat, he says, still in bed with a very nasty cold. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, Mr. Ether. Hope you uh, hang in there. Get better soon. Uh, Daniel. Daniel on YouTube. Good afternoon, guys. Shout out to Daniel. Taz Bliss. Taz Blitz on DLive. Salutations, guys. All right. Shout outs to you. Taz Blitz. Crypto Bull 21. Hello, world. Hello, world. Bull. Uh, Ron Legato. Got a Jameson with a drop of honey should fix you right up, Mr. Ether. Yeah, good one. Um, the old school home remedies. Uh, do that. <laughs> Mr. Ether writes, bring it to me though. All right. Uh, the J Glover 4168 on YouTube writes, can you take a look at SL? All right. Hang tight. I'll try and get right into your request once we get into that segment. I'll add that to the list very briefly. Let's see here. Ron Legato says he's chained to a lathe. Oh, damn, Ron Legato. I didn't know you were a um, metal worker. Or you're a woodworker. <laughs> or, yes, maybe you're tortured. Um, Ron Legato, uh, shout outs to you. Let me know uh, what kind of material you work with. ETH1. I always wanted to buy a mini lathe and make my own chest set. Oh. Uh, I definitely want to. That's one thing I want to add to my, uh, you know, home uh, home shop for sure. ETH1, sure. hi everyone uh alex 1233 hello and good evening anywhere 10 a.m here and still super tired well you gotta sleep in a little more buddy alex 81 sg good day everyone david rice joins us on twitch as well as youtube um alex 1233 quite unhappy with all the red bubbles on uh, bubbles today rollo maximus uh writes hey friends let's get that bread indeed let's get your daily bread Pico Blanco Verano, Subdued Jack. Uh, I guess I'm a little stupid. David Rice, Bubbles All Red. It's a lovely day, uh, maybe. Uh, I guess you only buy ICP for a day max before it falls back down to its downward slide. Uh, Man, colorblind. Somebody is... Why gray bubbles? There's no problem at all. Uh, anywhere, you sound a little dejected over your um, ICP, yes. When bounce and back to its slide. Lots of the music people. wasn't that great anyway. Uh, Ernest of Gaia writes cheers. Shout out to Ernest. Uh, anywhere did Bow go back up? We'll, I'll add Bow to the request line. We'll check on it in a little bit. Hang tight. Peckham08 is with us on YouTube. Wawa, what happened? Jeez. Are the markets kind of like this water trick? Uh, not too sure what that means, B-Flow. Right. Peckham08, did Elon tweet again? Oh, no. I, I don't think it's... Elon related, just the regular volatility you should be used to by now, especially in the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's Ponzi, shout outs to you. I can also draw a circle on the chart, come up with a random catchy headline. All right, I know we're super critical of Turnaround Tuesdays, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how the month of July plays out, see if Tuesdays become some kind of uh, interesting part of the weekly cycle uh b flow if miners move to another country that isn't cheap to mine, wouldn't that be bullish for price uh yeah including the fact that right now we had a massive drop in the difficulty probably encouraging a lot of people to fire up their equipment again even here in the west crypto bull 21 live is buffering so bad oh damn stupid live uh taz blitz it's okay here in the uk he writes all right strange a few people right uh, let's have a look. Binance Dex is almost the same as a regular exchange now. Uh huh. Okay. 
Uh, I'm just a regular old punk, not just a cyberpunk, I guess. You're feeling regular lucky, punk. Yes. Are you feeling lucky, punk? Or we unload on you? Uh, oh, it feels like 2018 again. Anyone else? Yeah, kind of does. Honestly, I feel um, I feel like we're in the we are in a more like um 2017ish maybe, or the major run up. Uh, let's see here. GB Professor Wally, sub fool, shout outs to Wally, ah, uh, the Shermanator. Wasn't he in the news a couple of years ago too? Shermanator? How did we get into the Shermanator on in topic here? Um Yeah, maybe he was. Probably nothing for anything good. David Rice, uh, D Live is acting up. Alright, steel, iron, bronze, brass, and around the god of Alright, very cool. Very cool. Man works a lathe. I might have to get in touch with you, Ron Legato. I have some stuff that needs uh, machining out. David Rice, spin me up some gold. Yes, we're going to be uh, fabricating everybody their own custom gold chains. Uh, okay. Then send one BTC to the following address. We will get the materials uh, assigned, and Ron Legato will machine them out for you. Uh, Sherman in Congress. Ah, yes, this congressman. Yeah, he's the Shermanator. I was thinking of the. Herman. All right, guys, I know what you're here for, and it's high quality TA brought to you by Alex and, of course, Jason. Even let's get into it. I'm going to jump over to Alex's stream. Very nice. Alex already live. Well, I'm going to get into that scene now. Really on the ball since Puerto Rico. Certainly has. Certainly has. Um, you're getting the new refreshed. Um, he had a bird fly into his place earlier. Atlantic. I, he did not. The bird did not fly into my place. It flew into my window, wow. but the window was closed. Yeah. Wow. Pop, <laughs> oh, man, you can get complimentary complimentary birds delivered to your to your window. Sweet. What a life! What yeah. a life! All right, guys. In all seriousness, I am. Uh, I'm gonna get into the requests. Well, I'm gonna start collecting those requests. In the meantime, uh, you two take over for a few minutes, and I'll be in the background. One last reminder, D Live Chest, 30 minutes a bit. Okay. So uh, you guys will recall yesterday we were actually looking at this particular spot for the rejection. And I uh, it's actually it was actually eerily good. I uh, I wish all our TA was that spot on. But uh so we're we're we seem to be experiencing rejection uh over here at the at the 3.618 of the uh, trend-based FIV extension that we've been eyeing ever since uh, last year, really. Yeah. Uh, we did end up breaking this uptrend that I told you guys to keep an eye on. Would have been a really great place to uh, get out of any, uh, any short-term Bitcoin long scalps you're in. Guys, tre trend lines, they're really powerful. I know, right? Strong line on your chart. It's that simple. Uh, but so we got the pullback that I had been looking for yesterday, and now I and now I admit I'm not entirely sure if 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 like that was the extent of the pullback to expect, and we're gonna keep going up here, or if we may retest the lows. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I I will say that. Because we have the median trend line right here, that my feeling is price is going to be very attracted to, to still downwards here. Uh, it was like we, we need to just like spend more time here at the median. If you guys will, uh, here let me let me show you uh, let me show you the pitchfork I did for uh, uh, I, I did for the uh, pitchfork is bad. Uh, I, I did for the uh, the last bull market of 2017, or excuse me, for the bear market in 2018. So I did this in May 2018. This is as far as price had gotten at the time during the bear market. So we topped out at 20K, blah, blah, blah. We bottomed here in February. And we started to, uh, we started to kind of trade sideways here. And you can see my contention is that, you know, since we, we fell out of the uptrend of the bull market, we were now in this a new trend, the, and the trend was the, the bear market. Uh, 
yada yada yada. According to the rules of the pitch for forks, uh, since we failed to break out of the current pitchfork channel, we can expect a return to the white median line. Uh, other support levels could intervene, however, so there are two potential price, blah, 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 blah. So, this is telling us we're going to eventually end up back down here at the white line. Let's play it forward. Came down to the white line. Cool. Okay, this pitchfork is working like we thought. Boom, we find resistance again at the edge of the pitchfork. Here, uh, as you can see, we move, we get extended away from the median line. Because uh, uh, we, we found the, we found horizontal support here at 6K, blah, blah, blah. We broke down in November. And what happens is we return to hang out at the white median line, right? We, we get a little overextended below it, but boom come right to it again. That's how the pitchfork works. It's it's like the true trend. You know, the trend is some dollars per day downwards, and price may have volatility above and below that, but it, it will tend to return to like the basic median trend. So looking at here, this is what we're kind of expecting to happen in this spot. Look at this here on the weekly. Come up, spend some time with the trend. We get extended to the upside here. We come back down to the median of the trend. So yeah, that's that's my feeling here. I I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not convinced that we break down here, but I just, for those reasons, I'm just more inclined to, to think that, uh, even if we move up here to 43 or 45 K that we're, that we're coming back down into this area. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue keeping our eyes on, on the trend at least. And that's kind of been my idea on the fractal that I've been talking about back from October 19 is we got that that pump up that was kind of out of nowhere that Jericho that kind of just wiped the floor and then we kind of went sideways for a very little bit of time and then we just broke down and all the way back to the mean of that uh of the pitchfork so I mean it could be the exact same scenario just because we get a large play to the upside doesn't mean we're not going to return back to that median yeah. so if you, you guys this is that sort of the area he's talking about where we we broke down from roughly 14k we're at 10k we broke down to eight people started getting ex even more bearish i remember yeah. everybody was like oh yeah we're going back down to 3,000, like right now it's over uh, yeah so we broke down a little bit further and then boom right in everybody's face uh this this big reversal uh and mm -hmm. then and then after we wiped everybody out then we totally game. went down for we went even lower and then we stopped out all those people to the upside. And then we stopped out all of those people to the downside. So it's very rough. I mean, that's just the way she goes, boys. Like, it just likes to white people when they start feeling like, oh, I got the direction down. And then it just switches directions on you. Let this be a lesson to you, boy. Never trade. <laughs> Never trade. Get a job with the drill. Ethereum looks stronger than Bitcoin here. Uh, Ethereum hasn't had much of a down day, and at this point, uh, you could you could argue that resistance has become support. So we, we were looking at this area as resistance. I said I have my doubts. We're still below this resistance level. I don't like it yet, and yet here we are, uh, slowly finding support here in this spot. It seems we're still holding the uptrend on lower time frames which we did not do on Bitcoin, as you guys saw, we, we totally, totally broke that uptrend, yeah. I think, I think I like Ethereum in this spot. Uh, okay. On the, on the daily, we also see Ethereum Bitcoin has broken uh, the downtrend here. And we've got room until resistance. We, we've got room to move up more here on Ethereum and, and still, and still have this be like a bearish trend of Ethereum versus Bitcoin in, in the long term, which we're kind of looking for here, like a little bit more of a pullback. 
that's okay for right now. So let's move over here and take a look at Bitcoin dominance. Still down today, uh, which is kind of what we've been looking at ever since we uh, we got the break of uh, this this uptrend in dominance a couple days ago. So I guess I guess things are kind of going according to plan. It's unfortunate that uh, everything signaled long yesterday, but I mean, the systems Sometimes are what they. Build, I mean, we 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 trade on the daily. It's it's kind of ridiculous to expect no drawdown. Right? Like, well, I mean, we yeah, the, these trades could still complete. So absolutely, I'm you know I'm glad we entered them, but it's it would have been nicer if we had just kept going straight here. Oh, absolutely, but that's part of the game. Yeah. I don't like drawdown. <laughs> yeah, depending on how you draw these trends, we have broken above many of them. So you see, I'm privacy perp. It's kind of a convincing, like, we, we're, we're above that trend. The, the other ones are, are a little questionable, like right here. I could probably redraw this where we're above it. Um, but it, I'll just leave it right there, it's fine. We, because one way or another, we just we want to be just a little bit more convinced. We just want to be more sure here before before we before we enter more heavily into the spot than we already are. Well, I guess I I guess I already know what the Dixie is doing, so I can't I can't play the game where we guess what the rest of the market is doing based on that one single asset. So Dixie is down well, today. Let's how do you look. think how do you think that um, tech stocks are doing just in comparison to what we've been seeing and the Dixie going if up? The dollar is up this much, tech stocks are down. Gotta be. That's what I would assume. that's what I would assume. Yep. But we've been seeing some wackadoodle stuff lately. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we are seeing some follow through on this continuation signal. We were looking at that yesterday. Um, very interesting here. Everything else is down against it. Uh, Australian dollar. British, the, the Canadian, the, the loony, the Euro, Japanese Yen, the Swissy, everything down today because the dollar is up. And we were talking about the Australian dollar yesterday as a particularly good way to short against the uh, short, long the dollar against other things or, you know, short something against the dollar. All right, so Dow Jones up today? What? That's not the narrative that I was spinning. See, I told you we've been getting some weird things happening here. That was strange. Fuck it, Jericho's all around. Mm. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, at this point, I feel that we could we could move up a little bit further here and uh, continue retesting into this area. If we if we can break this downtrend, then I would be I'd be really interested in taking the Dow further here. But this is still such a heavy area of resistance that I would be extremely cautious here. We we uh, we also don't quite have a long signal on my system yet, but this is, I mean, it's it's not specialized for Dow Jones anyway, so. Hmm. Okay, well, tech stocks are down slightly. <laughs> not even quite a sell signal yet. It hasn't quite crossed over. I don't think there's really anything for us to do here on the QQQ, and I don't even know if it's really that bearish. Um, and the SPY, of course, is probably up a little bit. Yeah. But not a new all-time high today. It actually... So we gapped down... Unopened, traded up all day, traded
trade back down. Here we are. It's interesting. This thing seems to really want to break trend. You know, however you want to draw the trend, it appears to be broken here. Yeah. I'd, I'd say on lower time frames, this guy just doesn't... I say on lower time frames, the spy just doesn't uh, just doesn't look that strong here. It's interesting. What's the rest of the market doing? Mm. That's a no good. That's a no good. Yeah. So this is our weekly uptrend on gold that is, is that our monthly uptrend? What, what's up with this line? Is it a logarithmic trend? Okay, it's a logarithmic trend. Mm. No, I'm not happy with this line. We actually, we don't need this anymore. We don't need this uptrend. Maybe it's maybe it's a monthly line. All right, guys, it's just, you know, if we're going to base stuff off of trend lines, it's very important that we at least try and get it right. You know, sometimes we got to update stuff as we go along. It's, you know, that's the nature of the game, but you, you got to make it appears, at least. Still appears to be right. Yeah. I guess we're, we're still, we're still above the trend right now. Okay, well, I think this is probably still a place where we'd want to long maybe one more push upwards, even if even if this is all just a topping pattern and we do break down towards like 1400, 1500 here on, on gold. This is an area, like if we broke down from up here, this is the area that I'd be targeting right around 1450, 1500. That's a significant uh, back angle. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And. But I mean, you know, just the chart is what it is. If if this if this entire level breaks down, then I see us splashing down there. Yeah. It's a it's a long term uptrend. It's a it's 2019 2021. We have this intact uptrend. If it breaks. It's going to be a big break. Uh. So silver is a little bit interesting here. It's really hanging around its point of control right now, essentially. It could go either way from here. Um, I suppose most likely it is a move upwards. You know, move up then we move down then we move up again then we move down again uh this is yeah, kind of the rhythm of these things but overall I, I i'm still still biased to the downside on higher time frames i mean just you know look at the monthly here seems uh a pretty clear rejection from this level once twice three times 
Uh, I would be looking to pick silver up at around twenty dollars again. And I, you know what? I, I think Alex of the past said that in September of last year. That's why I've got this arrow here. And I think I'm still looking for twenty dollars. It's this very interesting level here on our VPBR. It's a previous it's high. Wild. What? I said it just takes a while. Yeah, uh, these are these are big commodities. So, I uh, let's let's go with Alex the past uh, prediction. Uh, he had the wisdom of the ancients all the way back in September, uh, and uh, I'm still looking for twenty. I think. Yeah. Palladium's monthly is very interesting. If we close this, that's incredibly bullish. Yeah, that's a nice uh, bullish engulfing there. If yeah, you, or, you get more pressure out of that. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's sorry. Yeah, it's definitely not a bullish engulfing, but um, not yet. No, but it looks like it's primed. Yeah, this looks like a clear break on Palladium. If we close today above, uh, I say if we if we close the day anywhere above twenty seven twenty five, take it. You should take Palladium. Uh, we we've broken back above the the downtrend right here. We're back above the previous high. This is a this is a really bullish monthly reversal candle right here. Uh, this is a, this is a sign of absorption. So we we break this previous all time high around twenty six hundred on the monthly. We come back down. We kind of push hard into this entire resistance area, and buyers. Buyers just are, are there. They're waiting. They're they're ready to go, and they buy it all the way back up above that previous all-time high. It's a it's a great sign of reversal here. It's powerful. Monthly candle like that is not something you see all the time. Pretty strong leak reversal right here. Kind of from here, this almost looks just like a simple retest of a previous resistance level. Like, oh, we got to come up. Oh, we forgot to retest resistance. Loop, we do. Then onwards, we continue. I think, um, yeah, basically whatever higher time frame you look at right now for Palladium, this is uh, this is a pretty powerful chart. It's very suggestive. Sure, Philly would be interested. Mm-hmm. Uh, platinum is still hanging around in the uh, right around the thousand dollar buy level that we had previously marked out. Uh, until this uptrend, or until this downtrend breaks, there is still the possibility that we could uh, end up accumulating more near like nine forty, nine twenty five. But if if we were to break this uptrend then or this downtrend then, I uh, I feel pretty good about. Uh, a longer term move upwards. Big reversal on corn today. Wow. Well, we'll see by the end of this week if this gets sold into. If not, if we end up recovering this uptrend, then gold could uh, that gold, then corn could uh corn could really move. A very heavy buyback here, but it could just be a, um, it could just be, uh, a low volume relief rally. I mean, it's Damn. such a powerful candle. Damn. It's like, if, oh, if the candle was any smaller, then, then you could, then you could dismiss it and be like, hey, you know, there's not a lot of volume today, but man, that's a lot of movement. Yeah, that's, um... I mean, look at it historically. That's like a it's record like candle. It's like weeks of movement here, yeah. right? All to all today on corn. Was there? Was there? Yeah, big there's got to be some corn news or something. Like, government finds extra billion stash of corn or something. Yeah. Actually, no. There would there'd be something. There'd be losses due to the due to the heat, maybe or something. Uh, Brazilian corn crop loss concerns mount on frost forecasts. You say yeah, because it went up. So we're losing soybeans supply. are in excellent condition. That means soybean cost should be going down. Man, we're really in the weeds here, aren't we? But I, it's still interesting stuff. I mean, why? Why? Mm -hmm. 
with commodity, oh, sometimes you guys know I hate to ask why markets move, but with commodities and forex, sometimes there are answers. You'd be like, "That's why the market moved." Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Soybeans, mean, also, soybeans. wow. You mean this See, year's orange like, crop wasn't ruined after bro, all? Oh my god. I don't know, man. It just, a day ago, they were talking about how good the supply of soybeans is. That should be bad for price. No. Maybe it's only, it said 68% was good. Maybe that's like less than the. See, I don't, I don't know. know. That's that's yeah. why you got to stick to your stick to your stuff. I don't know crap about coin be soybeans and corn, but corn it's very beans. interesting here. And <laughs> corn beans, yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, and man, soybeans here, just fucking wrecking shorters again. You got ahead of yourself and you thought soybeans were really going to go for it. Yeah, it, it must have been tough to be an active uh, trader in soybeans because just sitting on it would have been the yeah. right move for a long time. You know, I got to I got to I got to give it up for our downtrend here. It was a great time to buy once we broke that. Yep. All right. I don't really want to look at too much more commodities right now. I'm just not feeling it. Um, what are world markets doing? France. Well, we thought it could recover yesterday. Down. Hong Kong. Down. UK. Ooh, that's a real break. Guys, I think the UK economy is a short here. That's rough looking. Look at this. Uh, actually, that's not quite a bearish divergence because we made a lower high uh, on price too. This is just, I mean, this is confirming what we see here on price. If you live in the UK, um, watch out for your pension funds. Yeah, I, I heard that they Lydia. took all the, the guns away from the police too. Uh, well, I mean, is that a joke? No, that's not. I, I heard that's real. I, I No, I... The police haven't really carried weapons in, but mostly, yeah. They, 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 they have AKs here, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So, I mean, I think they took them away many, many, many years ago. It's Well, it's news to me now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that was, I mean, there are some armed um, bobbies over there, but uh, just speaking, no, the average, average cop uh, is just armed with... Uh, Nightstick. Yeah. Nightstick. The long arm of the law. Yeah. But hey, knife crime is sort. Knife yeah. crime. And yeah. nunchucks. Massive. <laughs> it's a big nunchuck problem of, over there. Of knife crime, and especially in the city of London, I think it's the stabbing capital of the world right now. So. Damn. It's super bad over there. Well, I think I would rather get stabbed a couple times and shot a couple times um surprisingly uh, it's counterintuitive on that front but we'll get into that topic on another day okay. yeah india here i think it's pretty clear it's time to get the fuck out uh and this is i i gotta say i'm very happy with our ta here on india it's, it's kind of outperformed we got this beautiful long signal here uh and we had this area as a target and that has been strong resistance boom 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 rejection get the fuck out get out um great shorting opportunity for those of you who can uh who can either short these Oanda contacts or have some way to uh short india here japan after more sideways it looks like we are going to break down from this consolidation uh area so if we consider this to be a a descending uh kind of a descending triangle pattern with with just kind of a break in it uh let's see where's the bottom here here all right let's treat this as uh, a descending triangle where's our target oh we already did that's what this is this is our target right here alex of the past knew what he was doing here and did the work thank you sir all right so this is our target right here. We're we're looking at uh, we're looking at 46.5. All right. So this makes a lot of oh no, it's here. All right. We get a little ahead of ourselves. We've got a nice shelf of volume down here that I think it makes a lot of sense to target for our initial push down here on Japan. Once we get this, uh, once we get below 
28.5 here. 28,500. That's gonna be that's gonna be the break of support. That's your signal. And look at time transformation here. You can see just like where's momentum going? Push, push, just like no momentum. Just kind of petering out here. And price is gonna follow uh, this distribution, which is getting lower and lower here. Netherlands. Well, we are still holding the uptrend here, but for how long? Look at this bearish divergence. Ouch. Confirmed exit signal. Ouch. Yeah. 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 Interestingly, Singapore is up today. One of the few things. Taiwan kind of up today, but it's up into resistance. Like I, this, this looks like continued shorting opportunity to me. Uh, Bonds, UK bonds are up, US bonds are up, US two-year bonds, five-year bonds are up. NASDAQ 2000 sideways. S&P 500, a little wilty, but up to up today, as you guys know. 30-year is just ready. 30 years, almost ready to break this. <gasps> oh, <clears throat> man, that snuck up on me. <laughs> And 30 year bonds really ready to just break out of this downtrend that I've been extremely generous on. I, as you can see, I'm, I'm drawn from a wick here onto like the tip top of this candle body over here. Uh, and, and here we are, heavy resistance overhead, but we're about to break it on 30 year bonds. So, um, this could be a really incredible, uh, longing opportunity for 30 year treasury bonds. About time. You've only been in it for six months, right? Yep. Then your German bonds up today. Yeah. Man, gold looks bad here. Okay, I guess that's really all I have to say on the uh, world markets right now. Uh, that dollar, guys. That dollar. Oh, that dollar, man. Well, at the very least, you know, at Bitcoin is is looking very interesting here in this spot. It seems to be a confirmed breakout, like however you want to draw it. So, for right now, Ethereum looks like it's going to be doing better than Bitcoin in the uh, in the short term. I don't know how long it's going to last. And our hope is that the markets really can bounce from this spot without having to revisit all the way below 30,000 first. I, I really think I'd like to see shorters stopped out, but if, if everybody bought the dip already, then they, they could get hurt too. Well, um, I guess, uh, yeah, why don't we go ahead and do chart requests? All right. Let's see. Get into that. Uh, in fact, before I do, what we're going to do is we're going to open the chest, guys, actually. We are a couple minutes late for that chest. I did promise it a quarter after. Uh, that's right. Mentorship today. So we're going to end the show a little short. Luckily, we only have like four or five requests in the bag for today. So we get to do this relatively quickly. In the meantime, let's get into dispersing those the lemons guys so i'm gonna get the lemons out of the way and then we're gonna get requests what few we do have to work with today which is probably appropriate since we do have to end the show early no problem here let's get those lemons in the bag here we go uh let's see here what's the lucky number now uh, let's call it 6 30. lucky yes. number 11 lemon Actually, you know, I don't know. I mean, Ben, if you don't want me to give away too many lemons, you got to come back and take over the lemon distribution yourself. But in the meantime, wait, dude. no, we t we took lemon distribution away for a reason. Well, so we yes, bubble. and apparently he's going to take it back for a good reason. I've completely bankrupted this uh, reserve of uh, lemons, guys. <clears throat> I don't think Ben's ever going to financially recover from giving me the keys. I promised him I'd be responsible, <laughs> but uh, in fact, I've done quite the opposite. 
All right, gentlemen. Millions, yeah. millions of dollars worth of lemons gone. It's true. It's true. I am far too generous. Call me Robin Hood. I steal from the rich, uh, the rich business owner. I give away, I give away to the to the people. The chat. With that said, guys, I've just deposited uh, a few hundred lemons in the chest. We're currently at 436 lemons preparing to give away so in about 15 seconds so this gives, should give everyone plenty of heads up in about 15 seconds i'm going to click the distribute button oh Same. that crypto bull just came through with a diamond all right well bull i'm going to add another hundred lemons to the chest on the count of that diamond that just came in and yeah in about 15 seconds i'm going to hit distribute so any second now you should see that just uh uh propped on your screen if you don't see it sometimes you got to refresh your d live window i'm distributing now so which means you should be prepared to click prepared to click that right now here we go i'm collecting and let's see if i can get the distribution prompt on screen just to kind of show you guys what you're working with here this is my dist prompt here Seven seconds remain. Get your lemons. Hopefully, I gave everybody plenty of heads up for the lemons. Hope you were peeled to your terminal. There we go. Lemons have been given away, and we got a slightly different leaderboard today. It's good to see some new names on this board. Uh, Taz Blitz. Taz Blitz with 108 lemons. David Rice with 62 lemons in second. Any word with 45 lemons. Rolo Maximus with 36, and O Beam. Obeam with 30 lemons. Congrats, guys. All got your lemons in today. With that said, yeah, uh, gonna get into the requests now. Congrats to everybody who got theirs today. All right, let's pull up those requests and we're gonna get right to it. Here we hide this, reveal this. Today's first request is brought to you by the Jay Glover over on YouTube, and he writes the following: it "says uh, Can you take a look at SLG? It looks like it may be a good long entry point after a recent breakout. Higher time frames, it looks like it could have had some solid gains with gaining, gaming growing. Okay, so mm, got a gaming nope. stock. Look bad right now, man. Get this off the street." Like a swing failure so far. Testing the other side of the trend. Further breakdown. Yeah. Even when I try and be like really gracious with this line, like we broke the uptrend, now we're on the other side of the uptrend. We're on the other side of the weekly baseline. We're below the point of control here around $6. Even on the daily, we, uh, we appear to be rejecting from. Uh, Kind of this level right here. I guess, what is this? Six dollars. So, historically, all right, support here at six. Resistance, kind of resistance, if you want to consider that here. Uh, some support here, support, resistance, resistance, resistance. We're starting to get, uh, this is kind of a bearish divergence. I mean, this is a little lower low, but it's way lower here. I say overall, um, I don't want to be in, in this spot. If you could pick this back up near like $3, maybe $2 at 50 cents, even, yeah, even $2 to like 50 cents, that would, that would make more sense. It's like a good consolidation area. I can see price returning to that area, but for, for right now, you'll probably end up pretty far underwater if you uh, if you, uh, if you if you grab this here. So that's my feeling on it. All right, let's get into the next one. I suppose that wraps up your thoughts on Super League Gaming Incorporated. Jay Glover, thanks for that one. Hopefully, we've given you some insight. Maybe not what you wanted to hear, but certainly the insight analysts have to share. Uh, let's get into the next one. Before I do, I'm just going to mention uh, Nox Intox on YouTube. Uh, I see your request to look at uh, MIC content or M content, uh, BSC token. I mean, you seem like you're shamelessly shilling this particular project in our live chat. Um, maybe if we're feeling generous, uh, give it a shake. But otherwise, uh, 
consider this a warning. With that said, uh, shout out to Jake Lover for that one. Let's get into the next request. Uh, all right, this one's from Any Word, and not quite a request, but he did mention ICP. I guess you only buy ICP for a day max before it falls back down into a downward slide. All right, what kind of move did ICP have? Continuing, yeah. Thanks to be expected. Yeah, not too bad actually. Yeah. It's going to accumulate some more down here around $40. Uh, you can see there's just a, uh, we, we kind of lose momentum. Big candle, medium candle, small candle, and then today we get a reversal. I think if you had seen yesterday's candle, that should have been your, your big warning right there. <clears throat> you guys know I don't do a lot of like candlestick reading, but you can, I mean, you can just see the momentum is petering out. That's, that's what this difference in price movement over time means. It's just, uh, running out of steam so uh, yeah. I, I expect us to kind of continue to range here around uh, $40 30 $35 What's next all right there's a look at ICP for any word and uh, or was that anywhere let me just double check yes it was any word he's got one more request as well following up uh, he asked did bow go up well um I guess we can check the charts for you. I don't think Bao has done much, but let's give Bao a shake. Mm. Day Bao Bao. Didn't go up, but it didn't go down as much as some other things went down. I don't know where my... So, log trend still unbroken, and then I think the linear trend, that one is broken. Yeah. We'll see what happens here. Um, I still, I still think Bao has a lot of room to move upwards in this spot, but it's going to be really dependent on uh, on what the market does. Because we do have resistance in this spot, so support here, support, support, resistance, resistance. Here we are again at the spot with some resistance right around uh, 4.8 fractions of whatever cent this is. Uh, let's uh, let's just continue onwards. Yeah. There's really not much to say. We'll see what happens on it. I, I think the chart still looks good. All right, couple and, minutes. And, uh, this has moved back so much since. All right, there is your look at bow. Couple minutes still left in the show. Lock out these couple requests I have here. This one's from Boris Bitcoin. He writes the following: Kava and Humanscape, if time allows. Many thanks as always. Let's start with Kava Labs. Then we'll get second. Uh, this actually, I would not, this actually doesn't look exactly like everything else, but it doesn't necessarily look appreciably better either. We do have a break of this downtrend. That's good. I would suggest that the most likely scenario is that from here we push back up one more time towards five dollars on kava and then finally reject really hard um i'm not looking for it here anymore if we reject from this spot then where are we gonna go down to what makes sense? Is there somewhere where I can get even more data? Uh, no.
Okay, there's there's just no more data. Okay. Well, at the very least, that means I can go back to chart I was already using. What makes sense? Oh, very interesting. The area that I have marked out as our resistance is also the weekly baseline. So what we've got resistance from here, resistance here, axis resistance here. Now it's our baseline too. Okay. I think this spot is probably making sense to me. Some support resistance here. Let's look for support one more time on is this a dollar seventy five cents, two dollars on Kava. <clears throat> what was the other one? Um second one was humanscape. Ticker H U M. It's an Ethereum based token, primarily trained a bit. Oh uh, all right. here, there's Trades on uh, FTX, yeah. Humanscape is, uh, is this like the gender neutral version of the Manscape products? I'll just let that hang there in the air. Yeah, no comment. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't see any good reason to be in this right now. There's a lot of resistances overhead that you just see like we haven't broken. I think it probably makes more sense to be short in this area than it does to be long. Uh, if, if we do break above this, then then great. So essentially, if we can if we could close above like. Eight cents, nine cents, then that would be a potentially good long signal. But until we do, I just I wouldn't want to be in this at all. What's next? Right. Well, there is your look at Humanscape and Kabalobs. Shout outs to Boris Bitcoin as always. Thank you. The, well, quality requests. Boris Bitcoin always comes through with uh, seemingly. All right. Uh, closing minutes of the show. I'm going to knock out the last request or two. It's going to be Rolo Maximus. Uh, take a look at KDA bag, if you can, please. Um, that's Moderna. Quick look at KDA before we wind the show down. Uh... I suppose this is uh, another one where this is, if, if we do get a reversal in this spot, I think this is good to take maybe all the way back towards 75 cents again. Yeah. And then I would look to to have us experience a rejection again from this height. Rejection here, rejection here, resistance. So one more time, 75 cents. And then that movement down to 25 cents, 30 cents we're looking for eventually. But looking at today's candle, yeah, sure. I say take it to the upside. Nice if you, up if, control. Yeah, it, it looks to me that uh, sellers are getting a little exhausted here. Yeah, where's the volume there? Well, we can uh, maybe let's look at a, let's try KuCoin real quick. See if that's gotten any any better. No. So Bitrix had more data, but you can also see on, on KuCoin too, sellers are running out of volume here. A lot more selling going on up here than there is over here. I don't think it'll take much for uh, buyers to step back in on this spot. 
But wait for some kind of signal. We just don't we just don't really have it yet. All right, Rolo Maximus, there's your look at Caderna. Here is the last few requests. Uh, since we're out of time, I was going to entertain the shilling for M content BSC token, but we're almost out of time, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, Crypto Bull wanted to look at Ethereum Classic USDT. And Crypto Who Vaso also wanted to look at EOS. But let's do ET for Bull for now. It's a, it's a nice trend break, it's an, and it's a nice movement, but uh, there's nothing we can really do with it. We're pretty overextended above the uh, qualifying line right now. So yeah, I, whether whether you're using a log lo, uh, log trend or a uh, a linear trend, we've got a break here. That's good. So I'm thinking after maybe a retest of around $45, because you can see there's some interesting volume right here, around 45 So we're here, we come back down, we don't go lower, and then we move up towards... I say this is a good place to be targeting. $80. So if we do reject here, which we seem to be, I would try... Uh, what's beeping? That uh, was my phone. Okay. Okay. Um. Yes. This. Uh, if we do reject from this resistance level, I try and pick it up near forty-five, and then take it towards uh, eighty. Maybe uh, it's kind of interesting volume around ninety-two, but it, 80, 80 makes sense. So. Right. There's your look at Ethereum Classic. We gotta wind the show down because we do gotta get to that. Uh, mentorship session here i'm just going to shout out the remaining requests if something seems uh, super exciting alex feel free to uh take over but uh crypto huaso eos i know it's the same as all their alts but why not uh why not might be because we're out of time so if indeed eos looks like everything else probably uh, not worth. yeah i'm sorry it, just try and order it first uh, on the show tomorrow i do want to do eos but I I gotta get ready for, yes, for the he does. And oh, finally, yeah. uh, any word asked, what's the worst that could happen to our pirate chain if they regulate or ban privacy coins? Um, I mean, R doesn't exactly enjoy wide listing across the space. Uh, I, I imagine it would survive and live on, but indeed, it would be a huge roadblock, huge setback if really there's not many open markets to trade this token on. So it would be, uh, it would be a setback. Although it's hard to predict exactly where R would find its place in the world. But again, it doesn't really have wide listing across the crypto exchanges presently. So uh, how big of a setback? Hard to say. With that said, there is your look at the request, guys. Today's episode is in the bag. Another Wednesday edition. Breaking Bitcoin market update all wrapped up in a pretty bow. What more can you ask? Once again, shout outs to our analysts for holding it down for the latter half of the show. This where we begin to wind down and head out the door. Can't thank you guys enough for kicking it with us this uh, Wednesday afternoon. If you're new to the show, be sure to follow and subscribe. You know we come to you live two hours a day, all DTA and cryptocurrency uh, punditry every day. Um, finally, premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com where you can find many of our premium offerings. You can check out our educational material, Pathways to Profits course access to our proprietary indicator suite, uh, signals, uh, premium membership access to the Discord, so much more available at premium.crackingcrypto.com, discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com for your Discord invite to one of the crypto-related trading servers in the land. Finally, yeah, we're going to have timestamps available for you after the show. So if you missed any part of the show, you want to rewind back and check any of Alex's analysis of uh, wider markets and so much. We cover a lot of charts in one day. Each reference that by watching the replay and check in the descriptions below. Thank you to Crypto Bull for managing those. But we got to head out here. This is where we punch out. Can't thank you guys enough. We'll see you tomorrow for the Thursday installment. Final words, our analysts. Great safely. Yep, just trade safely, guys. Um, there's always a little bit of pullback before the 
the signals usually take off. So, I mean, you guys all know in the group that I'm still in my long, haven't been invalidated. So I think just be patient here and manage your risk appropriately. See what happens. All right. Peace out. Stay out of trouble. Don't get wrecked. Shout out to Crypto Wasso, Crypto Bull, David Bryce, Any Word, Rolo Maximus, and everybody else dropping thank you. Thumbs up in the live chat tomorrow or premium plus you in the mentorship session about 20 years. Cheers, guys. Goodbye. All right. Now.